Hey there, it's Stephanie from Janku, and today I'm going to address a YouTube question about how to create new text on an existing image in Inkscape. All right, so just to show you, um, we got a comment the other day, actually it seems that we got it last week from a uh, YouTube user, Yansel's Party Crafts, and she asks, Hi, I'm looking to mirror an image that already has wording on it, but when she does the when she does the wording remains backwards. How does she fix this? Okay, so I basically replied and said if it's a PNG or JPEG, there's really not much you can do except be creative and cover up the image um, or recreate the image in some way depending on what it is. I'm going to give two examples of this and I hope they're helpful and um, if they're not certainly not please feel free to comment below and explain what you are looking for but what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken two examples so I've downloaded let's let's just import some of the images we'll be working with so first I'm going to import a random um, messaging glyphs that I found online. So I'm going to import that and that's a PNG. And as you can see, I just went to file, import. I selected the file on my desktop. So I already imported, imported the PNG. Now let's import the other, the JPEG. And it doesn't matter which one you're importing. They're both going to be files that you can't really edit. So let's import this JPEG. I'm going to click OK. And depending on how large the Im image is, it could take some time. So let me just shrink this down. Oops. Let's make sure that we keep the dimensions by holding down Control on my Mac. I'm just going to size it down to the size of the other image. Okay, so let's start off with these more simpler looking cartoon forms. If I were, let's say, to, if I wanted to manipulate this speech bubble right here, I would recreate it. And to recreate it, it's fairly simple. I'm going to go to the square tool and I'm going to click, hold, and drag. And the reason you can't see it is because I think I have it white. Yep. Let's make that black and there we go and if you notice there's rounded corners so I'm gonna go to the node tool and I'm going to select not the squares here the little nodes here I'm going to select this circular node and what that does is it allows me to round the corners and I want the corners to equally round you can round one side, I believe, more than the other, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold control, and I'm just going to slide it down to somewhere approximately where it looks like those rounded corners there. Okay, so we we got that. Now, if you want it to look exact, what you can really do is you can just you can hover over it, or actually, the best thing to do is zoom in as much as you can go and just just really overlap it overlap the object right on top so you can just it's kind of like tracing so I'm gonna just do that quickly and then I'm going to take the bezier tool and I'm going to select one point here one point here and it, I'm not really too careful about how this looks here, this line, if it's you know overlapping, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select both objects by holding Shift. Make sure that you don't select the rest of the image. I'm going to select both of these objects that I just created. I keep on selecting the wrong one here. Okay, here we go. Let's just click on this shape that I created. The stroke was filled but not the fill. So I'm going to just switch that up. What I did was I went to the fill and I selected the solid color. 
On the stroke, I make sure to hit the X and that removes that border. The stroke is the border. So now what I'll do is I'm going to make this one object. I'm going to click on the triangle. I'm going to click on this rounded rectangle while holding shift. And then I'm going to go right up to path. Let's do a union. Okay. So when you do a union, it takes the two objects and it just makes it one. It retains the outside border of the object and combines everything within. So you get this nice speech bubble. Okay, so with the text, it could be a little tricky. What I would recommend is if you're really trying to match the text, there's online services you can use where you can upload the image and it will detect what font it believes is being used. And sometimes these websites are very accurate. I'm just going to do it this way. I'm just going to type out, let's go back to that, um, that text tool. I'm going to click somewhere on the canvas. Wow, this is a very large, whoa, okay, that's a large S. Let's just reduce that a little bit. Okay, let's type, I'm gonna go back. If you ever click out of the text box, just go back to the text tool and put your cursor back near one of the letters and that will fix it. So I just typed it out. Obviously this is not the right size. So I'm just going to go over to one of these corners. I'm gonna click and hold control to retain the dimensions and not um, compromise the shape of the font. I'm not going for real accuracy here. You can spend a lot more time and you know make things match. Uh, I noticed that this seems a lot more bolded. So I'm going to highlight the font with my text cursor and I'm going to go over to this and I'm going to select bold. So even that is a little thicker than that, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it as is. So let's just take that. I'm going to make sure that this text, it should be at the top, the selection. So just note that every time you create a new object, it layers on top of everything else. This should be layering on top, but just in case it isn't, I'm going to select race selection to the top and the text is white. So I'm going to go to the fill and I'm going to bring this all the way over to this side. And that gives you that FFFFFFFRGBA. And that is way too big. So I'm going to click down and hold control. And if I perfectly want to center this, what I'll do is while this text is selected, I'm going to hold down shift and click, click the speech bubble. And I'll go to align and distribute and I'm going to select center on vertical and center on horizontal. Actually, the center on horizontal is not good because it's centering according to this endpoint and I really want it to center according to the rectangle. Um, what might be a good thing is to create the text first, center it on the rectangle, then add the triangle afterward, but I'm just going to eyeball it here. Going to click shift and select it again. I'm just going to center it on the vertical axis. I'm not even going to do the horizontal. So we have something that has, it's not exact, but in fairly simple amount of time, I was able to create um, an image here. So when you go to save this, and I guess you would probably be writing something else. I, I guess in the, the question that I received, what was happening is the speech bubble in this example would be turned over. So it'd be flipped. So let's just go ahead and flip that just to give the example, flip selected objects. Oh, wrong way. Let's do it this way. Okay. And because this is a separate object, it's not going to flip with the speech bubble. 
So you would be all set there. What I'll do is, for the purposes of this video, instead of deleting everything, I'm just going, when I export it, I'm going to export it as a PNG and as a selection. And just go to export as and pick what folder you would like to save it in. So that's, that's the first example. The next example I wanted to move on to is something a bit more complicated. So this might be the kind of thing that you have. And then when you rotate the image, this happens. It's backwards. Honestly, there's not really much we can do about this, but there's creative ways we can get around it. So my suggestion for this image would be to copy and create another image. So I'm just gonna copy, going to paste. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlay this. And I have my guides on so it's perfectly over the other image. So now what I'll do is I'm, I'm gonna take the square tool and I'm going to make a quick square around this font. And then I'm going to go over to the pointer tool hold down shift and I'm going to click this top image and I'm going to go to object clip set. So in case you don't know what happened, I had two images and really I was only dealing with the top image. I essentially just clipped an existing image. You can take a look at my YouTube video on clipping and masks. Um, to understand how this works, but I just clipped the top image. So what you're seeing is the background image I had and that clipped image. Okay, so with this said, what I will do is I'm gonna make sure this image is not selected by clicking outside it, and I'm gonna click this background image. And now I'm going to try to flip that and Yes, I mean, I don't know what you would want to keep here. Maybe you want to try to clip that out as well. But you can see I kept the wording going the right direction, but I was able to manipulate it so that the image is now flipped. That is my quick suggestion on how to manipulate PNGs and JPEGs. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask. I'll be posting these videos every Wednesday.